Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how to set up your paper in Word when you're using the online version of Word. But before we get to that, I want to let you know that as a Sanjack student, you can get the desktop version of Word for free. In order to do that and install it on your computer, click these nine dots, go to Office 365, and then simply choose Install Office. You want to install the apps. It'll give you Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And then those are on your computer to use for Sanjack or any other purpose as long as you have an active account with Sanjack. But today we're going to focus on how to do this when you're just using the online version. If you don't want to install or don't have a computer to install, in order to do this, you will again go to these nine dots, choose Word, and then we're going to start from a blank document. There is a template for an MLA style paper, but it has several issues and I would rather you know how to do all of the setup anyway to get it done correctly if you start from blank. So let's do that now. Choose new blank document and you come up to a blank page. The first thing that we're going to do with this page is set up our header. In order to do that, you click on this little tab it may not show up until you move your mouse up towards the top. When you go into the header, you'll note that it has three little places in a table. We don't really need the table, but we're going to work within it. What you need to do first is insert the page number. You're going to click in the right hand box. You'll see your cursor blinking at the side and you're going to choose insert. And then you're going to choose page numbers. You're going to choose the upper right hand side and you'll see that it gives a little symbol indicating that it's going to add the page number. The cursor is still blinking and don't hit space or anything, but just type your last name and hit the space bar one time. Now in order to do this properly, this all still needs to be done in Times New Roman and 12 point font. So you need to tell the computer that. Highlight the text. Go to the Home tab, select Times New Roman. I've used it recently, so it shows up in my recently used. You may need to scroll to find it. Make sure that it also chooses size 12. Now when you click on the bottom of the paper, it seems to disappear. But what happens is that it's sort of working in the background. If you go to the View tab and you click on Reading View, you will see that your header is still there. Let's go back to editing our document. In order to do that, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you're typing in Times New Roman, 12 point font. Make sure that you're set to left alignment. And then come to these three dots at the end, which say more options choose line spacing and then choose line spacing options. Here you want to make sure that it's generally left aligned, that you have zero points before and you want to make sure this one also says zero points after otherwise you're going to get additional space when you hit the enter key. You're going to say double spacing all the way through and this should be everything that you need to have set up for this little screen. Hit OK and then you come back to the body of your paper. Start with your name on the first line, first and last name. The next line should give your professor's name. The following line should be the name of your class. Don't forget to include the three digit class code. And finally the date. Most people in the U.S. will choose to use a date set up in the U.S. style, which is the month spelled out, the day, comma, and the year. However, you may also choose to use a European uh, setup if you like, which does not have a comma and puts the number of the day first. 
regardless of which way you do it, do not use simple abbreviations, um, just numbers with slashes or hyphens. You must spell out the full name of the month. The next thing you'll do is hit enter once and you'll choose to center the line of text by clicking here, text alignment, and here, center. And this is where you put your title. Be sure when you're typing your title that you capitalize the first and the last word as well as any word that's more than three letters. This is what we mean when we say all significant words. Once you've typed your title, hit enter, go back to your text alignment and choose left aligned and you're going to hit the tab button one time to indent. Once you've finished your first paragraph, you'll hit enter. In some versions of online Word, it auto tabs over because it can see that you're writing a paper and so it does that for you. In some places, it doesn't work. So in this case, it did, so you'll simply begin typing your second paragraph here. You're going to keep typing until you finish the paper. And then you will need to add a page break in order to separate the pages and do a works cited page. The way you do that is as follows. Hit enter, come to your menus at top, choose insert, and then you're going to choose page break. Now on this one, it puts a line here and it asks you to begin typing on the next line. What a page break does is it allows the next piece of information to be at the top of the next page, regardless of how much information you add or remove up here in the body of your paper. Note that it did automatically indent again, and we don't want an, any indention when we're doing the Works Cited page. So the first thing we're going to do is hit Backspace so that we are at the left margin. Next, to give it a good title, come to the Home tab, choose Align Center, and call it Works Cited. Not References, not Works Cited page, not bibliography, just works cited. Hit enter and then go back to your left alignment. This is where you will begin to enter your information for your citations for your story. I'm going to make up some things that make no sense um, just so that we have some text here so that I can show you what to do with it to make it have a hanging indent. MLA style changes often. I believe the current edition that we are on as I am typing this is edition 8, but the information that they want included does change. Always check your course information or the Al Purdue to make sure that you're including the right information in the right order. Normally, this wants you to begin with the name of the author. And then if it's an article, in quotation marks, you put the article title. I'm going to make something that is ridiculously long simply so that you can see what happens when the citation extends beyond one line. The title of the article will have a period after it and a quotation mark. You can see I have misspelled journey. Let me quickly correct that. The name of the journal it's in, we're going to call it um, Teachers of America. And note that the journal title is in italics. We follow that with a comma. We say that it was in issue 7, issue 7, volume 5. And again, they may have changed how they want you to do this. And that that was published in 2020. The next that we will have, hit enter to go to your next citation, and we're going to talk about my book here. This is a book, so it starts in italics, and um, we're going to pretend that it was published by Doubleday. 
out of Chicago in 2014. And we have it in print. And then next we have something by Billy Zane. Remember that you're alphabetizing by the last name of the author. His book was called Acting in America. And it was published by Penguin, for example. And we're going to say that they're from New York. And that it was published in 1998. And again, we have it in print because it's a book. Now, your work cited, in order to be correct, has to have a hanging indent. So in order to facilitate that, you will want to highlight the text of all of your citations once you have the pieces in the proper order. You'll come here to the three dots of More Options, choose Special Indent, and choose Hanging. And it automatically does it for you. You don't have to hit Enter, you don't have to hit Tab, you don't have to mess around with it. You simply do this. Now, obviously we want our work cited to start on a separate page. And because this page break is here, that'll happen. We also want our header to appear on every page. Um, so it doesn't really make it clear that it does that here. What you can do, however, is once again look at the reading view and it will show you that everything looks correct as it should. There's your first page with the actual body of the paper and you notice that the work cited begins at the very top of the next page. It also still maintains the header with the page number in the top. And there you have it, folks. That is how to set up a paper in MLA style if you are using the online version of Word.